G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So now that all the fish have woken up, I thought I should feed them some brekkie. And I thought it would be interesting to show you guys how I feed all the fish in my fish room and uh, all the different foods that I give them. So let's get straight into it and I'll show you what I do. Rightio guys, so here's the variety of food I give my fish. Whenever you're running a fish room or um, even just one aquarium in your home, you want to vary the diet for your fish so they're getting a wide range of vitamins and minerals that they need. Uh, so at the front here I've got some frozen foods, this is a refrigerated food, um, some foods that don't need refrigeration such as the microworms, these are live, um, some pellets, these are algae wafers mainly for the bristlenose catfish but some of the cichlids do eat them and at the back we've got some more pellets, some, some generic fry sized pellets, uh, some generic pellets to feed fish um, and some um, flake. And I rarely, I rarely feed the ones at the back to, to my fish. I just use that as, you know, as just to supplement their main diet, which you see in the front here. So I alternate what I feed the fish daily with the frozen food, but I also beef that up with some pellets. Uh, so I do, two, I try to do two smaller feedings uh, per day, and um, they will definitely get either pellet once a day. So they'll get one day they'll get the tropical one day they'll get the algae uh, max pellets. This here is some baby brine shrimp that I feed to my fry. It's dead baby brine shrimp, uh, newly hatched though, and uh, it keeps for about six weeks. It's about $25 a jar, so it's not that cheap, but it does save you the hassle of trying to hatch your own baby brine shrimp. Uh, you don't need to stuff around with salt water and aerating those bottles of water and separating the shells from the, fr from the baby brine shrimp. Uh, it, it, it bypasses all that time and uh, this, this makes it a lot easier. It comes with a little spoon, uh, however I use the, a little syringe to target feed my fry with this stuff. So it's really great. Um, you can watch the video uh, I posted a couple of weeks ago where I feed my fry uh, this stuff and they really love it. It's really good food. And I alternate feeding the fry this stuff. This is uh, live microworms. Um, I've also got another video um, in my series of how to cultivate these um, and pretty much maintain some live food for almost for free. And yeah, so basically I'll alternate what I feed the fish in the fish room. But anyway, let's, um, let's feed the fish uh, some mysa shrimp today. So uh, the one thing I've noticed about this mysa shrimp is sometimes you get smaller batches of mysa shrimp, like the, the actual mysa shrimp are small in, in each cube. Um, however, the batch I've picked up this time are quite large, so um, I was able to feed the smaller mice shrimp to um, my fry. But this, for some reason, when it defrosts, the mice shrimp are pretty large, so I haven't been feeding this as much to my fry at the moment, uh, which is unfortunate because I was, uh, uh, as, as I said, try and mix up what you feed your fish, and um, this was part of the, my fry's diet, but at the moment I can't really feed it because when these defrost, yeah, they're, they're, they're a bit too large. However, the Daphne, they prefer this Daphne over the previous uh, brand I was buying, and I'm able to feed some fry, the uh, frozen Daphne, which is great. Um, anyway, let's get straight into it. All right, guys, I hope this is working. Um, I tried to show you guys feeding the, the fish this morning, and uh, a lot of the fish were scared because of the huge camera that I use, my DSLR. So I'm using my um, GoPro on my head. Feels a bit strange doing this, but here we go. Now, yeah, the fish are reacting heaps better this now. They were so scared when I had the camera in front of them. So you can see the gold ockies eating the mice shrimp. And there's the little bits of mice shrimp are coming off the cubes. And the fry in the tank are also eating those little bits of mice. So let's go on to the next tank, the brevis tank. Neolamprologus brevis. The males just swim away to the back of the tank with the female at the back. That should kind of do this tank for now. As I said um, before, the mice shrimp in these cubes is quite large. Gee, I hope I have the angle right on this GoPro. Um, I was filming these uh, Judochromus regani this morning and um, I was saying how the male and the female pretty much broke up. Um, they were fighting and the female was bashing the hell out of the male. But uh, 
they since have made up and um, the female is accepting the male again. So they uh, were fighting for about two days and thankfully they're a pair again. Um, they got a lot, of, a lot of frying here now. So I've got three large-ish ones. I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro because of the wide angle lens. They're about a centimetre, just over a centimetre long, the largest one. And they've got about five or six new fry that are free swimming in the tank. So they'll eat up those little bits of uh, mice and shrimp that have defrosted. Uh, that'll be some uh, bit of very diet for them. Okay, the next tank is my um, Julichromus Transcriptus Gombi tank. Love these guys. There is a pair in here. You can see the ditch that they've made. Uh, they've dug a little bit of a hole in the sand. Let's give them some mice shrimp. Oh, that's way too much for these guys. There you go, they're happily eating it. But that is a bit too much, unfortunately. Okay, the next two fish I'll be feeding are up there. Trets, so I'll get my little stall. Step ladder. I feed the guys, I feed the trets first because if I was to feed the black calvers first and then get up on the ladder, they'll dive into their shells like they just did then because I'm waving my hand around. These guys never used to be skittish, but something's happened. Um, I'm not sure what it is, what's made them very skittish, but yeah, they just get scared a lot now. Um, so I'm not sure why, they just they just become skittish. But anyway, let's feed up, let's feed the trets above them. These trets are pretty skittish as well. Feed this side first. That's enough for that guy. So you, you rather, well, I rather kind of, I wouldn't say underfeed, but feed a little bit less. It's better to feed less than to overfeed and pollute the water. Uh, these guys, they'll, they'll happily eat that once I move away. They're starting to come forward now. You can see they're picking up the mice and shrimp. And you can see, well, probably not, I'm not sure on the camera, but the black, uh, sorry, the white calvus fry, a month old, they're still very small, haven't grown that much, but calvus are very slow growers. So I'll feed the white calvus. These guys used to be skittish a lot, but uh, in the weeks leading up to them spawning, they literally came out of their shells, and um, they're out a lot now. So you can see the male there. The female, she is quite tiny compared to the male. He's seeing the food. Come on, buddy. They're probably not going to come right to the front of the tank because I'm in front of them and the GoPro has a red flashing light on it. Uh, but I don't like to disturb them too much, so I'll walk away and they'll, they'll come to the front of the tank and eat. And now it's just the black calvis female that's out. The male is in the shell, hiding. Oh, yeah, here he comes out now. I'll give them a bit. They'll hopefully come to the front of the tank once I move away. Don't want to dis don't want to disturb them too much. Don't want to stress them out. All right, guys, my mixed tank and Eakin tank. Uh, I've got four Judochromus regani in here. These are the excess uh, that I had with the actual pair that I keep that keep breeding. A pair is forming in this tank now, so I've got another pair. Uh, that I definitely will will have a breeding pair out of them soon. Um, I've got four Neolamprologus brevis, or excess Lamprologus ocellatus gold male, and four Ventralis chaitika, and seven normal coloured bristlenose, both long fin and short fin in here. So there's quite a few fish in here, a couple excess fish. Um, you can see the amount I'm feeding these guys. Happily eating the mysis, gobbling it all up before it even touches the bottom. And uh, yeah, the ventralis can fit quite a large amount in their mouths because basically they're mouth brooders, so that's no problem for them. You can see this ventralis male here, he's dug a pit in the sand here. He's already trying to spawn with, uh, I think there's at least one female ventralis in here. And it, I think it happens to be that one there. Shouldn't tap the glass, guys. <laughs> uh, been keeping fish from my entire life and I still do it, crazy. But anyway. Um, you can see him colouring up there, he's got some nice blue 
um, marking or scales on him now, they're iridescent. Um, and yeah, he gets a black breast when he's courting the females, trying to get him to his little sandpit. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, after they digest this food a little bit more, I'll feed them some pellets. Okay, the next tank. Um, this tank's got my four trets in it. There's a breeding pair in here, although the male uh, is fighting with the female since uh, the, the first spawn that well, the, the first spawn that they had, where I actually had fry hatch. Uh, the female used to spawn by herself, basically about six times, and uh, on that seventh or eighth time, the male actually spawned with her, and there's about 20 wrigglers that hatched, and ever since that day. Um, he's been bashing the female and she's up in the corner there. I'm hoping that they can um, Get back together and spawn again soon because I'd love to breed these guys if they were to spawn again I'd definitely pull the fry out Okay, so we've got some Kawanga golds in here with them acting as dither fish These Kawanga golds are my only Lake Malawi and cichlids in the fish room. I basically won them at a, at a raffle and um, I also won the trets at a raffle so um, but yeah, the, the Kalanga golds are in here as dither fish, so to stop the aggression amongst the trets as much as possible. But um, these Kalanga golds are getting quite aggressive actually. And this male here, you can see how much colour he's got on him compared to the other Kalanga golds. He re readily fights with uh, this, this male tret here and the female tret. Um, so they've kind of played their role. However, um, yeah, I, I, I really don't want to keep them. Um, but they're, they're still kind of playing a role in, in being to the fish, so that's why they're still in here. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer I'll keep them. And I mean, yeah, the others don't really have much colour, just because they're just so subdominant to this bright yellow coin of gold here. Okay, on to the next tank. So, this tank has my electric blue rams. Uh, there's four in this tank, and there's one at the back hiding the sponge filter over this male here has really long fins another male here and then there's another female so I'll just feed them some of this mice shrimp I don't have much left in this little uh, medicine container see so I don't feed them a lot of food don't want to overfeed them they're picking at that that should do them for now And here you can see my um, Lamprologus ocellatus gold babies. These are the largest fry I have. They're about seven or eight months old here, I believe. And uh, yeah, they're the largest ones I've got. So they can f they feed on the adult food that I give the rest of the fish in this fish room. So this mice shrimp is quite large for fry, but they'll gobble that up. So there wasn't much left in this container. Uh, there's one mice of shrimp left in the container so there wasn't much much mice just left in this container so that's it for them however so that's it for them but I have this soaked tanganyikan pellets so this will go this gets given to the fry so I'm gonna put a whole lot into this tank because they eat heaps of it It's been soaking in water for about 10 to 20 minutes, so it's quite soft now for them to chew on. Um, you can test how soft it is when you just press it with your finger. Uh, so, give a little to the Neal Amprologus brevis. You can see there's like, looks like dust, there's little particles of the pellet in there. That, that's great food for the fry. So, I just kind of you know, squash a little bit, squash some of the pellets with my finger just just lightly and it kind of breaks them up enough for the fry to get some of those pellets. Now as the parents chew the pellet up, they're going to create that kind of, um, they're going to break up the pellet as well and that, that will dis disperse from their gills and into the water column for the fry to feed off as well. And uh, so, you know, that's another way you can feed your fry, um, relying on the parents chewing up that that, that pellet and expelling it through their gills and then it feeds the fry as well. So 
Um, don't rely on that alone to feed your fry, like feed them their baby brine shrimp or live microworms or whatever you want to feed them, crushed pellets, but um, it's another way that your fry will get food. So that's those two tanks. I'll just pop some in this tank because it's got some of the regani fry. And then we'll go up to the tanks up the top row where I've got the majority of my fry. So hopefully you can see this on the camera. In this tank, there's pr probably about 60 to 70 lamp uh, Lamprologus oscillatus fry. There's two generations in here. And uh, yeah, they'll just pick at that. The larger fry will pick at the big pellets and break it up, and the smaller fry will get a, f get a feed. I'll also feed these guys some um, microworms to supplement the pellets because there are some small fry in there that might not uh, be able to get enough pellets in there, enough food in there. So I'll feed them some mice shrimp just to supplement that. So these here are some Lamprologus, Neolamprologus brevis. So they've got some pellets now and I'll feed them some microworms as well. Next tank. These are my largest Neolamprologus brevis fry that I have. So they'll get a bit of pellets. I don't really feed these guys the baby brine shrimp or the mice shrimp anymore. Uh, sorry, the baby brine shrimp or the microworms anymore because they're just too large and kind of ignore it. Um, they're very, very skittish. They'll come to the front of the tank when I move away and um, eat those pellets. And then the next two tanks have more uh, Lamprologus oscillatus gold fry. So I give them quite a bit because there's about 40 in this that tank, and this has another about another 40. And these guys are pretty large now. They're going to get moved out of this tank eventually. Well, not too long now. I moved into a tank on the road, on the rack behind me, to grow out because the tanks behind me are about double the size of one of these tanks. So as you can see, I've got some pellets left over in this little container so now I just look around the fish room at all the fry that all well, the tanks that do have fry and see how they're going with pellets so they've got pellets still they've got pellets so that's more than enough the tank behind me though you can see they've almost eaten all their pellets there's some there's some on the on the bottom there but they could do with a little bit more um, so I might just feed them a little bit more of these So that'll do, and I'll just feed off that. Let's check up on the fry up here. So the brevis have got some pellets still. Same with the uh, Lamprologus oscillatus gold. Even though there's about 70 in here, there's some pellets still left, and they're going to get some microworms, some live microworms in a sec. So that's all right. The brevis is still eating. Obviously, they haven't eaten a lot of those pellets yet, I haven't given them enough time. The Lamprologus oscillatus already, both have pretty much finished the pellets in here, so I'll half, I'll give this tank half of what's remaining in this little container, and I'll give the other tank what's left. And that's it. That's them. So let's feed my uh, white calvus. I'm going to feed them some microworms and I'm just going to use the microworms that are on the lid. So here we go. I just basically dip the lid into the water and that's all there is to it. You can hopefully see them on the camera all coming up to feed. So these guys are about a month old now, or just over a month old. Some of, some of them are starting to grow, look a little bit larger than the others. Um, and you do have to separate the larger fry out from the smaller fry because the larger fry will eat the smaller fry. So they're not quite there yet, but um, I can already see it about a month in. So yeah, they're a month old. No doubt, 
in the next month or two I'll be able to really tell the difference in between the ones that are growing a little faster than the rest and uh, split them out. So that's the white Alto Lampologus calvus fry getting their fair share of brine shrimp I mean mic live microworms. I do dip the lid in here a bit because there is some small Judochromus regani fry in there I'll get a bit of a feed from that um, the Lampralagus oscillatus fry I'll get some microworms and these uh, Neolampralagus brevis fry I'll get some microworms as well off the lid and these guys here give these two tanks some microworms as well so another lid just saves you having to put your finger on the on the microworms and scooping them out also I'd find that as you grab the lids of the microworms to open them up um, and disturb the microworms they will move off the sides of the container down back into the medium back into the oats and they're really hard to, to get back out so um, you've got to be pretty quick with the microworms and that's them. Now I'll feed some pellets to the two uh, bottom tanks. Today I'm going to feed them the algae pellets. Because yesterday I fed them the Tanganyika pellets. So the guys in this tank eat the algae pellets, um, but not as readily as the Tretz and the Kalinga Golds. So I'm trying to let my hands dry a bit now. You can see them uh, eating, picking the pellets off the off the sand. Whatever they don't eat, the bristle nose will eat. So it's all good. Some more varied diet for them. You can see um, there's one slice of carrot left. I gave them three carrots yesterday. They've eaten them all except that last one. Um, they like they don't mind the carrots, but they go nuts for uh, zucchini, broccoli, and cauliflower. So um, there's a lot of orange poo in, the, or there was a lot of orange poo in this tank this morning. Uh, did the water change this morning, and uh, yeah, that's that's the only carrot that remains. But let's feed the other tank some of these algae pellets. The Kalanga golds are just pigs; they'll just eat everything. So I just do need to put them a little bit more, uh, so I make sure that the trets get their fair share of food. You can see them fighting and very skittish fish. Look at that male, just the male trek, just so aggressive. He's just shooing everyone away. He's quite, he's getting quite large now, um, but still not as large as he can be. And yeah, look, Kwanga Golds are eating everything. You've got three trets at the back. Um, that's why I need to put a little bit more food in here for those guys, just to make sure they're getting some food. All right, on to the next tank. We haven't finished yet. away okay so so this tank the um, albino bristlenose catfish see there's a lot of fry in here there's two two spawns You've got some smaller ones here and some larger ones here these ones were born around the 28th of Feb and uh, the other ones about a week ago See there's carrot in there, there's two, two slices of carrot in there, it's the first time they've had carrot. They're still eating the Indian almond leaves, that's, that's a, a nice little tip for you guys. Put some Indian almond leaves in with your bristlenose catfish, they love it. And those fry, it's a great food for those fry. They don't, not only eat the Indian almond leaf, but they eat the biofilm that develops on the Indian almond leaf. The, the bristlenose also eat obviously the driftwood and the detritus that builds up on the on the sponge filters but right now I'm going to chuck in some algae wafers and this brings them right out and to the front of the tank so I don't feed them the algae wafers every day you can also see there's a leaf from um, a broccoli um, I, again alternate it broccoli one day um, I might feed them the, the algae wafers one day then um, some carrots another day and then some cauliflower and then repeat repeat it you know 
just, just mix it right up. I'll also feed them some of the Tanganyikan pellets occasionally, uh, just for something different. There's also some mysa shrimp in here from this morning, so they are getting some meat as well as um, their mainly veggie diet. But um, I don't give them too much, too much meat. So yeah, they're happy. They just eat all day long, very messy feeders. Um, this tank did have a water change this morning, but you can see already there's a lot of poop on the bottom of the tank, and um, I obviously didn't get it all because I can't, I'm not gonna get underneath those Indian anomalies and break them up. So all good, they'll be fine. Um, keeping up water changes with those guys. And this is a couple minutes after putting in the algae wafers into the albino bristlenose tank. You can see all the fry swarming those algae wafers. Obviously there's the carrot uh, from yesterday. Also if you look closely, you'll see some of the bristlenose are different colours. We've got some obviously white albino bristlenose. And then there's some albino bristlenose which are very yellow. Um, I guess these adult bristlenose have a genetic in them where some of the fry are yellow. I'm hoping they keep that colour and um, I'll line breed off them and try and make very yellow bristlenose because I think that'll be really nice to see in an aquarium. I mean, you know, you've got your normal coloured bristlenose which are hard to see in a lot of um, aquascapes, whereas the albino, at least they stand out a lot. Uh, but with these guys, with some yellow ones, I think that'll be quite different. I know there is some, one of them, is an, there's an L number pleco out there that is yellow, I think, with blue eyes. Uh, but these are yellow with pink eyes, basically, with albino um, eyes. So, yeah, might be something different, I'm not too sure. It feels weird saying albino yellow bristle nose, but yeah, that's what they are. They're, they're very yellow, yellow compared to some of the other fry, which are clearly white. You can definitely see the difference there. Um, but anyway, so there you go, they're having a nice feed. Yeah, that's every fish in the fish room fed. So there you have it guys, all the food that I feed the fish in my fish room, and also what it's like to feed the fish in my fish room. That was a bit of a long video, but I hope you found it entertaining and um, informative. If you did, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, I'll wrap this one up now. Thanks, Heath, for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.